Ah, yeah. Honest discussion right here. A fresh philosophical discussion and a fresh bottle. Can't go wrong with that. Oh, I love this stuff. My last video on free will has already made it up to the third most discussed video on my channel. Uh, it's only beaten by uh, my two other videos on free will, uh, two of my philosophical proof series. So I think that's kind of telling in that this is a topic that needs to be discussed a little bit more in detail. Uh, now technically, most of the comments on that last video were from three people. Uh, Wild Card Gambler and Jesus is God, 777. Um, and by the way, I want to thank all of them for the discussion. It was definitely very in intense, especially uh, Wild Card. Um, again, I'm going to recommend people go and, and watch the discussion between uh, him and I, because uh, he's in the league in the zone. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. Now, uh, I still think he's wrong about this, though. Uh, and let me go into detail why. First, I want to mention where I think most people that posit free will kind of trip up on, and, and where the miscommunication is between uh, myself and the uh, people that think there is no free will, uh, and the people that uh, posit there is. It's the simple vocabulary word of choice and, and decision. That's what we call what we do. We say, I, I chose to do this, or uh, come on, make a decision. I really don't think that's what we really do. I think it's uh, an inappropriate word to call what we do. Uh, I don't think that word really exists at all, but uh, regardless, I think what we really do is more aptly uh, described as a deduction, an analysis of the situation with, with an outcome. Because, now, I, this might be a poor analogy, but it, when, it, when we put one plus one into a calculator, does it choose to come out two. Now, remember, it could come out three or one. The display could easily display that, but it comes out two. So is that a choice? Now, of course, no one really says that is uh, because it, it's not sentient and it's been programmed to, but isn't that what the brain is? Isn't the brain basically just a very advanced, very complicated calculator? What, when we see a situation, we look at that situation and we respond to it as best we can. We never respond to it any any worse than our best, really. Uh, we, we only do what we think is the, the, the best situation uh, at, at hand, or the best action uh, to take. Um, there might be a bit of a discrepancy in how effective that decision is, or our rationalizing of that, but we can't really come to any other conclusion than the one we come to. It, it kind of goes uh, along with what Agnostic Man said a while back. You, you can't choose to believe that unicorns don't, that, that not unicorns, you cannot choose to believe that horses don't exist. You either do or you don't. You're either convinced by the evidence or you're not. Now, if you take that and apply that to everything that we do, we can't, we don't really choose to do anything. We only deduce what the best action is based on our past experience and the current stimuli that's being received through our five senses. Which is why I posit that what we do is really a deduction. When Tom chooses the apple or to, uh, over the orange, there is reasons why he deduced the apple was better. And there would have been nothing to have, there, there was nothing in his body that would have made him choose the orange over the apple. He inevitably would choose the apple because the reasons for it were best. The uh, situation called for the apple, and there would have been no, no way for him to have chosen the orange. I mean, sure, he could have possibly went and grabbed the orange and ate it, but that's just the same thing as the calculator possibly coming out with three when you put in one plus one. It, it doesn't happen. It, the possibility exists, but again, it, in a way, it really doesn't. Now, that's what I want to kind of establish here, but um, as, as one of the things that people trip up on when discussing free will. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is what I believe to be the, the nail in the coffin of theistic free will, and uh, that is uh, prophecy. There are many prophecies in the Bible and in the Quran and in pretty much any whole, any monotheistic holy book, and I think they pretty much disprove free will. 
Now let me go into a little bit more detail because I think you are already formulating arguments against this if you are a free will proponent. Uh, but let me let me more precisely nail this one. When God, have you ever heard of a self-fulfilling prophecy? A, a prophecy in which saying it causes it to happen. The, the best example I have is Macbeth. In Macbeth, if you're not familiar, there's three witches that tell Macbeth, who's a very loyal servant to the king and a war hero, that he's going to get a promotion and then he's going to become king. At first he tosses it aside, but then he gets the promotion. And then he thinks, well, I guess I am going to become king. And then to him it doesn't matter what the means are. Uh, and he starts killing and basically doing anything he can to become king. Now, had the witches, the sisters, not gave that prophecy, would he have ever done those things? And the answer is really no, he wouldn't. Now, here's the thing with God. While God kind of posits that there's a probabilistic nature of the universe, and that's what allows uh, free will to exist, unfortunately, that isn't the case with prophecy, because when God makes a prophecy, he must know how that the prophecy is going to become fulfilled. Not that there's a chance that it could become fulfilled, but that it will become fulfilled. And he also knows that by saying it, that's going to have to cause it, because not saying the prophecy, not writing that in the Bible, not telling whoever he told to write it in the Bible, uh, to write it down, that would have changed the outcome. That's why there can't be any free will and still be prophecy, because he would be literally shaping the decisions of people in order to get the desired result of that prophecy being fulfilled. Many of those prophecies are reliant on human action. And if there's any probability that humans won't take those actions, then there's really then he can't make that prophecy because they could possibly not come true. That is why prophecy is the nail in the coffin of theistic free will. So let's discuss this for a while and um, please explain to me how this still could be free will uh, with the prophecy uh, actually coming true and actually saying the prophecy because again, remember, keep in mind, if he didn't say the prophecy, then the prophecy may not have come true, or something completely different would have happened. So that's where the whole probabilistic nature of the universe doesn't really help your argument here, wildcard. Um, have a nice day. Honest Discussioner, out.